All right, so the QX will act as the DHCP server within that VLAN. And uh, again, that helps keep your, your phone traffic separated from your, uh, from your data traffic. Okay, um, some of the, uh, we're looking at remote phones. Um, you know, some of the, the problems that you, you're faced with the, uh, the remote phones, uh, one of those is because the, the phone is uh, behind a firewall. Obviously, that's, uh, that's a challenge. Um, the, the phone is going to use a SIP port, and it's going to have, have a range of uh, voice ports. And those ports are um, going to be closed by default, so you, can, uh, you, can, you might need to manually go into that firewall. And that, that might be an option if you only have a few phones. You can manually go in and and port forward those phones to directly to the uh, to the phone. Another problem that that you might uh, might see on s some of the uh, is the fact that the the phone itself is is using a private IP address. So it uh, sometimes it might try to use that private IP address when communicating with the PBX. Okay, so that's uh, something that, that we, we look at, and we recognize that, and uh, with the symmetric RTP option, we will communicate with its public IP, uh, and um, with the symmetric RTP option, the setting, we're going to communicate and send the audio back to the same port from where the audio had originated from on the, uh, where it came from the, uh, the phone. As it passes through the firewall, the firewall, uh, that's another problem. The firewall often will change the port number. Okay, so if the, the phone originates and sends SIP messages out from port 5060 as it crosses that firewall, that port number might not uh, be 5060 anymore. When it gets exposed to the outside world, it might be something else. Okay, uh, and the same with the uh, voice ports, so it's not uh, consistent. So that becomes a, a, a challenge as well. Well, symmetric RTP will compensate for that, and we're going to send back the audio to the, the same port from where we received the uh, the audio from uh, coming from that from coming from that site. Okay, so um, so that's a, a another uh, problem. Okay, so some of these can be uh, mitigated. Um, it depends on the firewall and how strict it is I know sonic wall is uh, is very difficult sometimes uh, maybe to configure some of those uh, ports and even do port forwarding all right we want to look at um, the methods okay of configuring a remote phone I'm going to log into a uh, this is for those of you who are aren't this uh, familiar with the the PBX so you know the, this is I was initially logged in. This is a QX200. Okay, locally, uh, it's local with me uh, here on my network. And then I've got a uh, an ECQX. <clears throat> so this is our cloud-based uh, PBX. You notice the interface looks identical to the uh, to our our premise-based PBX. So if you learn one, you're familiar with both. All right, we're going to look at, uh, I've got some ex extensions that we're going to be uh, configuring today. We're going to go to um, the extension setup, and um, we'll look at the uh, extensions. I'm going to be configuring extension 1050, uh, 1051, 1052. We're going to be configuring a SNOME 710, a Fanville X4. The first one we'll do will be a manual configuration. It'll be on IP line 10. And then we're going to do a Fanville X4 using the provisioning server um, and also the Fanville's uh, redirect server. And then we're going to uh, look at doing a Yeelink on IP line 52 using the uh, OpenVPN settings. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to look at. Um, and yes, this is uh, um, it's a QX, uh, ECQX, and we have uh, I not I can't even tell you uh, how many extensions we have configured on this uh, on this system. Okay, so 
many, 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 many extensions. All right, so um, let's go to interfaces, and I'm going to look at the IP line settings. And we're looking at IP line 50. So first method, we're going to look at the manual uh, method. So I'm going to go to IP line number 50. And you get to, uh, you've got a device in your hand, and you look at your list of supported phones, and you don't, that phone or model, it might not be on that list. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's one of the newer phones that just came out from the phone manufacturer, and we haven't tested it yet. So at the very bottom of the list, you can choose the model type of other, and you lose the opportunity of being able to enter the MAC address. Okay, there is a, uh, a username. There's a password. Uh, you can enable this metric RTP option, and let's go ahead and uh, just save those settings initially. Okay, um, and I do need to know what that password is, so I'm going to go back and uh, generate a password. Okay, and um, so you click on generate password, and you've got the, um, if I'm careful, I can highlight it, uh, right click on it, and I can copy that password. Okay, and now I'm going to choose it by uh, clicking on it. I'll save it. I'll put it into the uh, password settings. Now I know what that username is. I know what that password is. All right, so at this point, I can go to always configure the QX first. All right, if you don't, there's a chance that you're going to get your IP blocked, as we mentioned last week with the SIP IDS. It will block uh, external uh, registrations that it doesn't uh, doesn't recognize. All right, so we're going to look at uh, configuring uh, a SNOM, the 710. So we've got the account. First of all, I got the password. I'm going to copy that password right into the uh, password settings. Okay, then we've got the username. This is local ext1050. I'm going to copy that into the account name. It's also going to be the same for the authentication uh, authentication username. And uh, we'll just put a, a name on this, Andy, extension uh, 1050, I believe it was. And then we need to enter the registrar, which is the location of the PBX. Okay, I'm going to copy this over from my notes that I have here and enter that into here. Okay, this is... Um, this is uh, Epigee Production QX dot Cloud dot com and at the end I put colon and we're using a different SIP port. We're using uh, 5065. All right, so we're going to apply those settings, save those settings. And at this point, the phone should be going off and trying to register to the PBX. Okay, and it did. And we get a 200 OK here. Um, if I look at the identity, um, it doesn't tell me on the identity, but if I look at the system information. And one of the nice things about the SNOM phones is you can look at the SIP trace. And you can see where it went off and performed a registration to the, the PBX. The PBX replied with a 401 unauthorized. And so the phone resends the register message. And this time it has the valid username and password, encrypted password in it. And because it matched with what we have, you get a 200 OK message from the PBX. So if we look at the PBX, we go back to status and system status, and we look at the IP lines regis registration, we can see that the um, 
here it is down here uh, this line local extension 1050 it is registered and um, it needs to re-register in the next hour okay at that point let's see I do have this phone over here um, so this phone is uh, working uh, because I did a factor default on on it it's just asking me for the time zone I just need to set that real quick all right and it shows me registered and I can dial this dial zero uh, we can dial this dial zero zero and uh, we'll see if we can make a call All right, if I dial star seven four, this phone is connected to IP line number fifty. Extension is one zero five zero. Okay, so now you can see that it is registered, <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. I've had a cold here lately. Hoping my voice will hold up. Um, so bear with me. So the the, uh, the phone that did register it out to the PBX, out to the QX. Now keep in mind this phone is on my private network, okay? And I can actually call it from uh, some other phone. I, I do have another phone that's already registered as extension 52. Um, so I can call that extension 1050. And you can hear the familiar uh, SNOM ringtone. <laughs> All right, let's end that call. So we've manually registered that phone, all right? Um, the next phone that we're going to be looking at, I've got a Fanville and I've got a Yeelink. They're both sitting there in a uh, factory default state. So let's go back. We're going to look at the um, next one will be the Fanville phone. And we're going to look at the uh, provisioning. Um, this is going to be IP line 51. So I click on IP line 51. And I need to specify this is a Fanville. It's an X4. And then I need the need to enter the MAC address, which I do have. Let me just copy and paste that over in the interest of time. Uh, local extension 1051. There is a good strong password here. I don't need to know what it is. Why? because the system is going to push that username and password out to the phone once it registers. All right, I can use the symmetric RTP option. Um, and let's go ahead and, uh, and save that. <clears throat> All right, now let, let me log into the, uh, the Fanville settings. Using, using uh, admin admin. Okay, on the phone there is a uh, there's an auto provision tab. Okay, so so you can see this phone is currently it's in a uh, a factory default state. Here's your accounts down here at the bottom. They're all inactive. There's nothing there. We're going to go to the auto provision, and down towards the bottom there's a static uh, provisioning server. I click on it, and there's a place where you enter the server. Okay, so this time this uh, this is where I'm going to enter. You could put an IP address or the host name, which is the um, the PBX Epigee Production QX dot com slash IPE conf IPE config. Okay, and um, I'll make that a little bit larger so everybody can see that. Okay, so um, at the end you put the IPE conf config, and by the way, this is uh, there's there's a document that talks about uh, doing this. Okay, one of the documents that we pointed out uh, last week that we looked at, and then we put in the configuration, uh, the file name. Okay, and the file name, this is the file name that the server. The PBX is going to be uh, have, 
and it's going to contain the MAC address. Uh, just all all, char all the uh, characters in the MAC address, no colons. Uh, dot CFG. The protocol method to use uh, to request the config file and uh, the update mode. So we're going to update the phone after uh, um, it's going to update the config file after it does a reboot. And we apply the the settings, and then uh, we can go over to tools. And in here in tools, there's a um, a reboot phone option. Do you want to reboot the phone? Yes, we do. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're going to let the phone reboot. It will take it a, a couple minutes, so we're going to move on to something else. Okay, so when that phone comes up, we're going to look for it. Uh, I'll let you know I've got it sitting here beside me, and uh, we'll just let it continue to reboot. And um, so what the phone's going to do is it's going directly to the PBX, the ECQX, and it's going to directly request that configuration file from the PBX. Okay, there's a um, there's another method where you can actually go out and have the phone contact the manufacturer's provisioning server. Okay, and um, so let me uh, let's take a look at that here briefly. Okay, as this uh, phone is actually coming up. So the phone's actually going to reboot a couple times. It uh, reboots initially. It goes out, and as it's coming up, it goes out, contacts the the QX, uh, requests a configuration file. That file is going to be sent out to the uh, to the phone if all goes well, and then um, and then the phone's going to reboot another uh, a time. Uh, in fact, it just came up now, and it's doing a second reboot. So hopefully that's a good sign that it's getting the um, configuration file from the PBX. All right, so this is uh, the Fanville uh, Distributed Provisioning Service. Okay, we've got an account uh, that we've requested of them. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know uh, all the uh, ins and outs of, of the their provisioning server. But uh, I don't really need to. I just need to know where I need to put my devices and where I need to set my configuration uh, options. Okay, I'm sure there's a lot more that you can do with this, and they've got some uh, some documentation on it. Okay, if I go to devices, you'll see that there's currently there's no devices listed there. Okay, I have created. There's a couple groups. Uh, one of them is called Epigee ECQX, and it's in this group that you specify where the uh, the PBX, the ECQX um, server is. Okay, and um, and by the way, the phone just came up, the Fanville, uh, it came up, it rebooted for the second time. If we go to status and we look at, um, extension 1051, you can see that that phone has provisioned, it's come up, so I should be able to call extension uh, 1051. And it is working. Okay, excellent. I love it when things actually work. All right, I did test this out yesterday just to make sure this was going to go as planned. So um, kind of minimize the risk there a little bit. All right, so so the phone is up. Let's just uh, go back to the phone, and uh, we're going to continue with the provisioning server here momentarily. But first thing I want to do. Um, 
is I'm going to be doing a uh, you can let's look at the settings if we look at account um, let's look at the uh, the line settings you can see that the phone is registered um, there's a username local extension 1051 and uh, here's the display name this came from the extension uh, Andy Fanville X4 the authentication name is the same there's the password here's the FG production um, dot com port 5065 all right so that all that was provided to the phone in, in the form of a configuration file that was pushed out from the, the PBX All right, in a moment, we're going to come back and we're going to do a factor default on all these settings and get it, see if we can get it to register through the, uh, the phone provisioning server. So let's go back to the provisioning server. All right, in the, um, so we were looking at, um, I logged into the provisioning server and um, I'm looking at the first um, group called uh, Epigee ECQX and I did an edit on that group and down towards the um, three quarters of the way down there's an option here that says phone flash basically this is the server uh, location where the server uh, is located where the phone needs to go and contact the server <clears throat> okay you can see that it's uh, Epigee production qx.epigeecloud.com then the method that's going to be used will be uh, TFTP, and then it's going to update after reboot. Okay, similar settings that we entered manually into the phone. Um, we we're going to uh, it's going the phone's going to get those settings now from the provisioning server. Okay, so um, so we've got our group, and that's really the only fields uh, the only field that you have to set is the server address. That's the main thing. But now you need to enter the, the phone's MAC address. And I do have a file for that as well. So I've already created that. So let's take a look at it. It's, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So you put in this, uh, this is a, a file from their provisioning server. You can download it. And it has a couple headings at the top. The, you just, uh, two fields, the model, phone model, and the MAC address. All right, so um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to close that file. Because I want to upload it. And we're going to upload it to the, um, we go to the device table. And um, over here, there's a place. Um, or I could also go to the group, and uh, in the group I can click uh, to view uh, all devices of this group. If I go to the devices table, I can do an add. And when I go to do an add, um, I can specify the group name. I didn't do this yesterday, so this is, uh, you can specify it now or you can specify the group after you upload the, the file and then you choose your file it's an Excel file all right this is um, what it's called max settings and I'll upload it <clears throat> all right small file you can see my three phones uh, that are now listed and one of these I think it's this one here is the um, the one that we're working on. I'm not sure if it's this one or the third one, but okay, so at this point what I want to do is I'm going to go back to the phone itself and we're going to go ahead and do a factory default. So I go to system, uh, 